Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video for me, Alan's Inventions. And on today's video, I am going to be showing you guys how I'm going to put solar panels on my shed right here. So currently I'm using basically an extension cord that just goes to the wall over there to get power in here. Now there isn't a lot of power uh, intensive things in here, just a couple of fluorescent lights, occasionally a fan, and then I just want to put a TV up there. So for now, I'm going to start off with a thousand watt system. I'm going to put links for everything that I'm using down below, um, but I'm going to use this time to actually go over all the components that I'm going to be using and then explain to you guys how I'm going to be setting everything up, starting with uh, Renergy, Renergy Solar Kit, the panels, and then this aluminum mounting or steel kit that I got for mounting it all together. So let's get started. Welcome back to another video for me, Alan from Alan's Inventions. And I still fumble my name when I say it for some reason. 30 years in, I figured I'd get it down. But anyways, on today's video, I'm going to be actually putting solar panels on this shed. Um, what I'm going to be using is this Renergy kit that I got. It's the 400 watt kit with the 1000 watt inverter. And then it does have a solar charge controller there as well. And for now, I'm only going to be using one of these 12 volt, 100 amp hour uh, batteries. I'm also going to be using this steel mounting kit that I got off of eBay to make things easier to attach to the shed. So the whole reason I'm doing this project is because I want this solar shed to be solar shed, not, you know, on the grid shed. <laughs> and actually there's no power in here. When we bought the house, there used to be power coming in through that cut out there, which probably went underground and went to the house. But after we bought the house, it probably wasn't to code. So they ripped all the electrical out and there's no power there now. So I want to add a few solar panels on top of there. I'm not sure if you can see that. And then, yeah, just have this thing be solar. All right, so I'm gonna dismount this camera to show you guys a little bit better uh, instead of my GoPro. Um, so sorry if it's not as steady, but basically, even though I bought this kit that's adjustable for the roof mount, I'm actually going to set it up in a different way. I'm not going to use any of the legs that it came with. I'm gonna be taking the steel, um, U cha uh, channel and bolting it directly to these uh, beams that you see on there using these Tex uh, screws. So these are for metal to metal assemblies. So I'm basically gonna put a screw, a washer, and then one of these one inch spacers. And then I'm gonna be using a bunch of this silicone. And, and then as far as bringing my cabling inside, I went ahead and got one of these uh, weatherproof little conduit things i think it's called um so it comes with its own you know waterproof connectors and bulkheads and things like that so that's going to bring the cables inside to the shed so after that i'm going to bring it in probably close to this beam the cabling is going to drop down this side and then i have i'm going to have my inverter um my battery my charge controller and then the battery all set up here on this plywood assembly that i'm going to build so there's a battery it's a renergy 12 volts 100 amp hour uh, battery thing weighs like 80 pounds so won't be moving that much and then here is my 1000 watt inverter so i'll give you guys another angle there with the gopro and then finally um kind of give you guys a quick 360 of it so it'll have two fans this is for the battery and then on the other side it basically has two outlets and then the remote control usb and then the on and off button um I'm gonna be using this little pad with it. So this actually is for on and off directly, which I plan on mounting on the door. So as soon as you open the door, it's gonna sit right here. So I'm using this Rover uh, 40 amp MPTT, MPPT. Um, so this basically has all your inputs, so pretty easy label there. Um, so it does have a temperature sensor, which is in the box somewhere that I'm gonna use. Uh, photovoltaic, you know, plus, minus for your solar panels and then your battery terminals and then your low terminals. I'm not going to be putting anything on the low terminals. I'm going to go straight to the battery um, with the inverter and just bypass that. And then the version that I got um, is the Bluetooth version. So it has a little Bluetooth module 
and it connects to an app that you can monitor everything on your phone like charging discharging and then average uh, sunlight that you get throughout the day next up is getting all this uh installed on the roof so let me mock everything up to make sure it works i'll show you guys and then we'll get it on the roof Okay, so at this point, it's all wired and cable managed. What I did is because it is hot, I went off and taped off the ends that are gonna go into the charge controller just to prevent anybody from getting shocked. And then I do have a fuse in here that came with the Renogy kit, and then this just plugs into that. So all my power now is gonna be out of these two lines. So let me manage that last cable, and then we're gonna throw this on the roof. Yeah, it worked. I didn't, have, I didn't have to add any additional spacers. And it's just gonna anchor it down now where these screws are. That's where the steel rail is inside. So I'm just gonna put a couple metal, metal screws, some silicone, and we're good to go. All right, so that concludes the installation of the panels up here that you can see. So hopefully that's a good shot for you guys. Um, yeah, let's move on to the interior and hooking everything up together. So I got my red and my blacks going in. Let's go. All right, guys, so is that the shot that I want? Yes, okay, can you guys see me? All right, so off camera, I built this whole little corner rack for this with this box at the bottom the battery is going to go in there i'm going to have the charge controller the inverter and then this extension cord is going to run directly across i put this one here for extra cable management um, if i have to run any cables to the led lights the fan and things like that that way i can just staple it onto this or zip tie it onto that without having to worry about you know the steel because it's hard to always drill into the steel so this is insulated on the back i put foam and then um just some reflective aluminum shielding and I built a little frame. So there's three two by fours on the back to be able to hold the weight. And it actually is drilled from the in to the out and from out to the end. So it's all pretty rigid on here. So, I mean, this thing, ain't, you know, it shakes the whole shed. That's how strong it is. So let's start assembling the electronics. So for this wonderful shot that I'm getting here, I actually grew a third arm just to be able to hold it up, get it level, and not hurt anybody's fingers. Oh, and there goes the level. Oh, there goes the battery. Pause. Okay, so the inverter is mounted. It's nice and secure. There's the rover. Time to pull my cables from there, across, and then down and into the charge controller. From the charge controller, down to the battery. From the battery to the inverter. From the inverter to that yellow extension cord. That's gonna power all the things in here. So, let's keep going. All right guys, so I'm gonna start hooking everything up together. I'm not gonna do it while filming, just cause I wanna be careful. I'm gonna be working with live power now. I'm not sure how charged that battery is. And then there is still some daylight out. So there's gonna be power coming in through those solar panels. So give you a quick rundown on how everything's hooked up. So I have the solar panels, that's not connected yet. So the solar panels comes into the charge controller. From the charge controller, it takes care of converting it from solar panel energy to charging the battery. 
Then from the battery, I'm gonna run two cables to the inverter. The inverter is gonna give me AC power. And then it's also going to have this three phase uh, plug on it that I'm gonna hardwire the lights in here because my shed does have some outlets. They just are in an extension cord. So I'm gonna change that eventually, just not now. But then the other thing I'm gonna be doing is hooking up two cables from the charge controller to the battery as well. So the charge controller is gonna charge the battery and the inverter is gonna pull the energy out. So the two connections from this and two connections from this are gonna to go to the battery. Again, one from the solar panel to the charge controller. And then I have to add the miscellaneous, you know, Bluetooth modules and power switches that are gonna go on here. And I'm also going to be installing a separate, um, just a little power brick in case I need more outlets there. So like I said, I'm gonna do it offline. I'll show you guys when I'm done with it. Be careful if you're doing this, it's a lot of power and it can kill you. Uh, I'm not an expert, um, so if you are, tell me everything I did wrong. Make sure to leave a comment telling me exactly what I did wrong. I'd love to hear it. Um, but in the meantime, let me just, I'll do a time lapse, here you go. Quick update, all of those are almost done. I have one, two, three, four more connections to make and I'm all done. But as you can see, it's nighttime out. So we'll have to wait for tomorrow for testing and... All right, so I connected the battery to the charge controller already and the Bluetooth turned on and the charge controller turned on, which is good, so... I know it's not done, but we're almost there. You can see my battery is currently at 12.5 volts. And I did pre-configure this before with a battery, uh, just for the type of battery that you have. So if you get this system, um, there's a link down below for a discount code, and then make sure that you select the correct battery type that you're gonna be using. All right, if you can hear all the dogs barking in the background, that's not mine, I swear. Uh, but anyways, it's all hooked up and tomorrow I just have to finish plugging this controller outside of the wall because I want to be able to control it from the outside. This is already waterproof and let's see if it all works. And we're good. See, this has power. Can you see this? This is already live as well. Charge controller up there is done. Inverter is working. I'll see you guys the next day. And good morning, guys. It is now Sunday morning. The sun is out. You can see. So I'm going to lift up my tripod and not drop my camera to show you guys. The sun is directly hitting the panels there. Hopefully you were able to see that. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to check how much, sun, how much power is being produced right now. So we are connecting to the Bluetooth module now, and there we go, it seems to be connected. Here you can already see the voltage coming in, the current, and then the charge power. <clears throat> it says current batteries at 98%. I don't think that's accurate, it just hasn't been configured at all. But I can turn the load on and off here, so that's working, and I can see the light blink up there. I'm sure you guys can too, see? Let's go over to settings. This all seems right, I think. Device info, there we go. I don't want to change the device name yet, only because it might disconnect and I won't be able to reconnect again. I will say Renogy needs to fix their Bluetooth app. It sucks. It f sucks. I did curse, but I bleeped it out. That's how bad it is. Renogy, if you're watching it, fix it. Um, okay, so we're getting 45 watts that you can see here. 72 volts, 0.63 amps. And it is 8.33 in the morning, guys. So everything seems to be working just fine. Um, I'm going to go mess with the battery options here just to make sure I have the right battery type set up. And then that's it for now, I think. 
I know I said I was going to show you guys how I was going to set up the the rest of the um, electronics on the door and things like that, specifically this on the door there, and then make the switch be external. However, for this video, I think I'm just going to do that separately. And if you want to see that video, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Um, well, mainly subscribe so you can see it. And then notifications so you guys can see my videos because... I know a lot of people are almost like not getting them. Thanks, YouTube. And then I'll be changing out all those lights for LEDs. I'm going to do a comparison before, after, um, you know, the current consumption for those lights versus the LED lights. I'm going to clean up all this mess I've made. But for now, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one.